The U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet has long been a symbol of American military strength in the Pacific. It's the fleet responsible for responding to some of our biggest threats in the world today, from North Korea to China. But the 7th Fleet has also sustained a series of tragic accidents involving uh, collisions between its vessels and civilian ships. Most recently, a plane crash killed three crew members, and all of this is really renewing questions about whether or not the 7th Fleet is spread too thin. So here to weigh in, Fox News military analyst General Jack Keane. General Keane, thanks for coming in today. Uh, you know, as I was digging through some of these numbers, it's just astounding the extent of the problem within the 7th Fleet. Uh, I believe we have a graphic that shows just how bad it's gotten. You know, even before this Navy plane crash on Wednesday, on Wednesday uh, the number of non-combat plane crashes was way up, uh, and the number of troops killed uh, in those plane crashes also up 34 just this year compared to 16 uh, at this time last year, more than a 100 percent increase. Why is this happening? Well, first of all, we've got a military readiness crisis that goes way beyond the Seventh Fleet, and certainly those serious collisions that they had are symptomatic right. of a much larger problem. The, the United States is the primary military power in the world, but the truth is our capabilities have eroded and our readiness capability has significantly eroded. We're just not paying the money it takes to train our pilots, maintain the training proficiency of our units, do the training for seamanship that's necessary. When you cut back on funding, it affects everything that's taking place in the service. On top of that, all the military services are too small. And our service chief earlier this year made an astounding statement before the Congress. It should have made a headline, but it did not. The, what they said is, is that we, the United States military, is at high risk to win a war against a, a high-end competitor, namely China or Russia. That's a staggering statement, mm -hmm. and it's reflective of the budget cuts that we've had for years. So you say it's a lack of manpower, a lack of money, the budget cuts, and that really echoes something that Senator John McCain uh, said back in September. Let's play it. Perhaps the greatest harm to our national security and our military is self-inflicted. Every one of our leaders, military in uniform, has said because of what we've done with the so-called sequestration, has put the lives of our service members at greater risk. Don't we have an obligation not to do that? And the defense secretary essentially said the exact same thing. And this is happening at a time when we need the Seventh Fleet now more than ever with threats from North Korea and China. How big of a threat is this to our national security? Well, it's a serious one, that, as I mentioned it. What's really happening is that the funding that the Congress has just authorized in the Defense, National Defense Authorization Act. The President is trumpeting the fact, pun intended, <laughs> that it's $100 billion over what Obama forecasted. So it's almost a $700 trillion budget. But here's the catch to this, and nobody is truly talking about it. It's as serious an issue as tax reform. In the next 30 days, if the appropriations committees in the House and the Senate don't remove the budget caps or the sequestration, that budget that they just approved at $700 trillion mm -hmm. will fall back to $600 trillion. It'll mm -hmm. take $100 billion will be taken $100 billion will be taken off of it, not $600 trillion, $600 billion. $100 billion will be taken off of that budget. It will go back to the Obama forecasted budget in the next 30 days, and nobody is talking about it. Uh, and you're seriously concerned that that could happen? Oh, absolutely. It's going to happen unless they remove the budget caps. It's already in the law. So w would you like to see more from, from the White House, from President Trump on this? I mean, he's been very outspoken saying that he wants to beef up the number of Navy ships, but would you like to see him do more to perhaps lobby Congress to make sure that this doesn't happen? Well, they're all focused on tax reform, and I understand you right. know, our preoccupation. They need to win. It affects the whole economy. Yeah. But this is such a serious issue. And it's not really getting the kind of publicity it should get. And the, the congressmen and the senators should feel a fair amount of pressure here because we are talking about military readiness. And it, all the service chiefs have testified how serious a crisis this is. And they just didn't testify this year. They've been testifying for a number of years the crisis that we're in. Well, General, thank you for bringing this yeah. to our Good attention. Talk to you. Appreciate it.